I just work brain integration in with everything. I think the amygdala is just involved in every bit of pain, every bit of stress. That one with the gut, um, those digestive valves, it's linked into an old pain and punishment circuit. So something where your nervous system, because you know that's what sugar does, it gives us that you know, endorphin release in the brain. They've done some studies where they've um, looked at people who are either, um, and it doesn't matter whether, uh, they sort of looked at people regular weight, um, overweight with addiction or overweight without addiction, and they found that w the lower point we are emotionally, the more dopamine release we have when we eat naughty food. So if you're emotionally okay and you have a donut, you don't get much more bang for your buck out of your donut. But if you're really depressed and have the donut, you get really good emotional input from that donut. So that it's almost like the lower and flatter we are, the more addicted we get to the foods because of that dopamine hit, which is just unfair. Because <laughs> you've also heard about those damn scientists who create the created the bliss point with food. Oh yeah. do something to those scientists, I reckon. <laughs> okay. Um, left hand on the right jaw. And hold out. Pain and pain hormones hold. Stress and stress hormones hold. Interestingly, so it hasn't hit the bottom part of the body yet. So that's great. Left on right. Because the longer we're in pain and, you know, and the less work we do, the more likely all that will unlock as well. But that's not. So that's good. Left on right and right on left. And hold out for me. Stress and stress hormones hold. Pain and pain hormones hold. Yeah. Ah, okay. So pain's more likely to blow your circuits than stress is in this circuit. Get tender there. Okay. Let's see what your foot proprioceptors are doing. Hold. <laughs> Hold, yeah, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> what about, do your feet click or ache or anything? Yes. Let's check your calcaneus. Hold. Okay. And hold. Yeah, no, none of those are working well. Also, let's for fun, lift your head up nice and strong. Hold up. Open your jaw and hold up nice and strong. Yeah. So your foot's jamming your occiput. So the calcaneus in your foot relates to the occiput. So when it's jammed, it'll jam. So it could be linked in with your migraines and headaches. You've done the foot manipulation stuff? No, I want to know how that. I don't like that. Don't like what? Got gentle Oh, okay, right. So firstly, we've got to loosen the ankles. I'm going to wriggle along left and right. Yeah, I learnt it from someone else who's now a hairdresser first, and then I learnt it the second time from Grolton, Wayne Grolton. So, oh, like that. So, you're pulling and you've got to get it really firm, and then you're flicking it into place. So, the calcaneus is pushing up that way, we've got to get it back down. It's like the keystone over a church door. If that top bone is out, then it just jams the rest of them. This one will be sore as well. Actually, I'll do them both simultaneously to give this one a moment to rest. Okay, so it's just important to get your hand there. So I sort of just make sure I've got a good firm grip, give it a pull, and then sort of give it a flick. Which takes a bit of strength, you know, it's not an easy thing to do, but, you know. Um, and then the navicular is directly in there at 45 degrees, so get a good firm thumb on it. And I, always, I already have lots of tension in there, breathe in and out. You can see, breathe in and out. Okay. Nice little tootsies, nice little tootsies. Mm -hmm. So then the cuboids are four bones that go across this side of the navicular. So one by one, and they're like, they get subluxations in them. And once again, that sort of impinges on the nerves and stops nerve supply to the bottom of the foot. So just one at a time. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. 
It's usually that one. Put him backward. Breathe in, yeah, up towards the top. Okay. <laughs> Breathe in and out. Yeah, but it's nearly always that second one, which was the sorest. And then I rock and roll the toe, the um, bone. So then we've got those bones across there. So it's more about just waking them up. Yeah, and sometimes you just feel like a little bit of a manipulation in the joint. Okay, so over here, back to the cuboids. Breathe in. Sorry. That's all good. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. And out. Well done. So it's sort of moving it like that, you know, so that you're getting tension across those bones. And you can occasionally hear those little cracks. So then the next part is the bottom of the toes. So what we need to do is just wiggle, wiggle the toes first. So just a wiggle. And of course, when you get headaches and migraines, the little muscles around the bones of the toes are all about the head and neck and that's just wiggling them. I know. <laughs> we haven't even got to cracking them yet. Oh. Nice little tootsies, nice little tootsies. Okay, so what you do, you pull on a toe and you put tension, you know, in the direction where we're going. So you put the tension that way, then you pull on the toe, you put... <laughs> Sorry. You put a firm, you know, like across there, then breathe in and out. And I only do each one once, breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Nice little tootsies. <laughs> and then remember touch for health one. So these little spots at the top of the toes. Yeah. Yep. So I just whack them in because that helps with lymphatic drainage of the foot. And then Bowen technique. I put in those little ankle moves from Bowen. So that's what I... Oh, and then this little guy up in here. Yeah. Just relax. Yeah, relax. <laughs> Breathe in and out. And then I just give the perineus a little bit of a roll. Because when that's been sore up in there, because that was sore there. Mm. Yeah, so even though it wasn't out, you didn't hear the thunder crack. Because sometimes it's a thunder crack getting that back in there. It's amazing when that happens. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we did that one, that one, that one, that one. Okay, so these little guys these little guys and now the toes so pull and breathe in and out breathe in and out breathe in and out breathe in and out I never do it more than once because breathe in and out if it's calcified it's just gonna hurt oh I forgot the little bone under here you know there's like a there's you know the patella bone how it's separate there's another one of them underneath here mm -hmm. So you just roll it out to the side. A lot of these are like Bowen technique moves. Yeah. So then waking up those lymphatic spots. Oh. And then just the top of the ankle, side of the ankle, and side of the ankle. Yeah, right, this one was sorer than this one. Mm. Yeah. It's just the two toes on that foot were broken when I was a kid, and they ignored it for like six weeks, so they're like this. In which foot? This one. Oh, wow. Excellent. She's broken a toe a couple of toes a couple of times just once a bit of that. Hmm. Right. So you don't know where it, where you are in the world around you. Hmm. Celestial circuit. Okay. So, so now let's recheck. So lift your head, open the jaw, and hold up for me. Let's check your celestial circuit. So, um, hold up, nice and strong. No. <laughs> is it off to the left? Is it off to the right? It's off to the left. Okay, so is it behind? Or out to the side? Like what? Because I don't know. So, sometimes, with you, because I've... Mm -hmm. When people get all liquidy, you need a good strong arm. Yeah, and this one works for me, and because I do a million muscle tests, it's just easier. Huh, interesting. I wonder if it's the baby thing. Your, your energy is forward, which is usually about 
you know, thinking forward and thinking ahead and that sort of thing. It's off to the left on the left side of your body, which is the caring, nurturing, feminine side. But it doesn't happen very often that someone's energy field is actually, you know, in front of them, which is sort of cool. It's, it's not a bad thing. It's just interesting. <laughs> just is what it is. But she's less in the here and now, though. She yeah, wants absolutely. To be a midwife. Yeah, no, and that's what it sort of is. You're not in, yeah. So this is where your centre of gravity should be. Hold up nice and strong. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> so it's more like yeah. over here. Oh, yeah. Hold. Cool. That's where you are. <laughs> oh, so, which is just funny. Shambles, child, Jesus. Do you need a blanket? It's quite cold. And Chinese would not have, be happy with you having um, wind coming in the back of your neck. Yeah, they're not perimenopausal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but wind is stronger than the hair in. Yeah. No, it misses me mostly. Do you need a blanket? No, no. Oh. What insulation? You're on the hip, you're on the hip bone here. Yeah. We're at the no, that's kidney twenty seven. Oh. So this is the best technique. So and it's the recentering technique. Yeah, because the way how I do it's longer with the tongue. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, putting in the celestial circuit. Yeah. Yeah, I did it myself. I stack that in. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Because you know how energetically when you're touching them, you know what you do affects them anyway. So yeah, I just love to. Oh, I would have shook it eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I used to do it. You know, when um, I first learned it with Charles, which is 12, 13, 14 years ago or something, I was doing it absolutely spot on for ages. Then I had someone who absolutely refused to either touch, you know, see the yep. one or um, touch the roof of their mouth. I thought, well, what do we do here? Oh well, I'll stack it in. I thought, well, oh, that seemed to work. <laughs> No. Have you done any training with Charles? No. He's in his 80s now, I think. His accident was 1985. Oh, well, what does that mean then, 85? Well, maybe not, because he was 35 when he had his accident. Maybe it was 83. So whatever that is, maths girls. Both majorly failed maths and operates. Yeah. Hold. Hold. Good. So we're back. <laughs> and if you've seen Sanubi surrogates, quite often she'll say, their celestial circuit's gone out. She just can feel it when, when it leaves their body. And that, that's those sort of times when you feel beside yourself, you know, when you're not feeling yourself, you're not feeling centred, you're not feeling, you know, all those things that we say as words, well, they are actually quite often, you know, really problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So maybe I'll go into your immune system now or will I do so? Oh, I'll give you a bit. Okay. I'll just quickly check the listeria. So this is firstly your immune system in general. Okay. Let's check biofilm and mucoid plaque. Okay. No. <laughs> Your body doesn't know what to do with it. And if it unlocks, it's usually creating inflammation within the immune system, creating problems. And it can be anywhere. It can be in the sinuses or the lungs or the gut in your cells, in your mitochondria. What was the plaque? So it's the mucus that builds up so in the body so. to protect ourselves from, yep. well, anything. So, you know, if you eat a bad bit of fish, you want mucus. You know, you want lots of mucus to get that, you know, dodgy bit of fish out as quickly as you can. Whereas bugs are getting so clever these days that they are living in the mucus in our body in particles, which is a real problem.
So it's, um, it's one of those things where some of the studies show that if we've got chronic disease, we've got between 10 and 20 chronic infections living in the body, and there's often a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, by the Clark. Listeria is a bacteria, isn't it? A virus. Is it? I would say, because I got rid of mine with um, grapefruit seed extract. Oh, it's anti everything though. Yeah. It's a great nutrient. Yeah, but gags on it. Oh yeah, it's pretty tough to take. It just has like twenty drops of it. Mate, if I have to, it's the easiest way. I'll just touch an electric piece. Hysteria and listeria particles. Hold up, nice and strong. Bugger. <laughs> okay, so. At the very least, your immune system does not have a program to deal with it. There's an energy mismatch, so the body doesn't know what to do with it. Doesn't know whether it's good, bad, or evil. That's because when she was doing it, she was cleaning out the room to help help the, the child and the mother. Yeah, right. So she's going to do a good thing. But yeah. <laughs> yes. We were house sitting, having so much fun. They had a spa bath. They had a spa bath? A spa pool and then outside, that was lots of fun. So perimenopausal. Oh, well, I was joking actually, but yeah, I would be. Because my friend said to me every time, because it's too late for me, she goes every time she got a hot flush. She'd think about the thought oh. she just had. Oh. Work through the thought. Oh. Three months later, her periods came back. Oh. Yeah, right. Mm. That's what I'm thinking, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, now, through this one, let's check MCAS through your immune system. So, from the neurology perspective, face down, it showed up. Mm. And now, let's check through the immune system in relation to MCAS. Hold up nice and strong. Okay. So in other words, your immune system doesn't know what to do with it, with it or what to do about it. And as always, histamine is actually a good thing when it's, you know, when it's meant to be there. How often do you get migraines? Um, it depends. Sometimes I can get them every day or sometimes I can just not get them for ages. You're an encyclopedia of stuff going on, baby. Twenty ones, not kidney twenty sevens. They're up here. Sorry. Okay. So now let's check the H1 receptors. Hold it nice and strong. Okay. Oh. So there's four histamine receptors, and um, you know it's things like um, histamine blockers, like Clarentines and Benadryls and stuff like that, that all work on those receptors. But it doesn't mean that the histamine stops getting released just because we're blocking them with drugs. And it doesn't mean the body got rid of the histamines just because we're blocking them with drugs. So the sort of stuff that's great for helping to pull out the excess histamines are things like um, bucket vitamin C and then acetylcysteine and essential fatty acids. Are you girls vegetarian or vegan or anything? Vegetarian. Not essential fatty acids, then. She won't do flaxseed oil, coconut yeah. oil. I'd say I wouldn't. Oh, so what do you do for oils? What do you do for good fats? Poor bags of chips. Shut up. I'm a terrible, I'm a terrible food problem. I eat mainly potatoes. I do like veggies, though. Um. Receptors. Um, okay, so your H1 
one and a H3 girl. Hmm. Darn, I thought it wasn't going to be as bad as H1, but it is. Oh well. <laughs> That's okay. Do your period pains. Sorry, she hasn't been in her body to experience them. Her house brown. <laughs> Oh, I have twice had like the first day of my period, like really sick. Yeah. Other than that one. H3 receptors. And hold. So, so let's quickly okay there is a um, hidden deep survival pain in there which is a quick you know there's survival switching deep survival in the periventricular survival system so this one's equivalent to having the TA on the body the thinking advantage do we do you ever learn that okay so I sort of more consider it because it's not the way that Charles taught it, but it's the way that it ended up working for me clinically. Yeah. Was that um, it's when the brain's trying to hide your survival stuff from yourself. It's like, oh, no, 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 I'll be okay. Life's gonna be fine. I don't need to think about my stress. And of course, when we're um, lazy or unmotivated, part of it is that the brain just doesn't want to make a decision, so it's easier not to think about stuff. So it's your brain protecting yourself from doing something wrong or, you know. Okay, so what sort of stuff goes round and round in your head all the time that drives you nuts? Oh, um, lots of things. So stuff about school, stuff about home. Not so much school. School is irrelevant. School is retarded. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff about my parents. Yeah, okay. So this little one, uh, morbidofrontal cortex, it's about when um, there's conflicting stuff going on in your head all the time. I love my parents, right. but they're dead to it. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, so love them, hate them as a classic, or am I doing it right, am I doing it wrong? What do I say, you know, did I get that wrong? You know, all those things. Or if you happen to be having a bad day and someone cops it and you're still thinking about it three days later because you just happen to be having a bad day and you spoke up for yourself and then you feel bad about it for the rest of the year. Yeah, so there's an old pain and punishment circuit that's keeping you locked into that. And, you know, stuff about your parents, you're never going to resolve it. You know, it's sort of not something that you have any control over. So all you can do is get more resilient yourself so it affects you less. Yeah, beautiful. That is one of the big things. Do I try and change them? Do I try and stick in or do I walk away? Do I stay or do I walk away? Yeah. It's funny, my son's breaking up with his wife, or well, she's breaking up with him, his wife at the moment, and um, and he's devastated because to him they're like soulmates. They've been together since she was 15, he was 17, he's 32 now. And, uh, and he just said to all of us, you know, just make sure you keep her in the fold, you know, keep her in the family. But he's been writing and ringing her for eight weeks and she's not returning his calls. And now all of a sudden the anger switched in. And uh, he's going, what are you doing talking to my family? And I'm like, oh, God. I'm thinking, okay, what do you want us to do this week? <laughs> anyway, sometimes the brain just does what it does and you have no control over it as well. This is a reticular activating system creating vigilance in the nervous system. So the nervous system is trying to keep you on the lookout for the solution. You know, when you're thinking about stuff all the time, and it's like your brain's just trying to find an answer. It doesn't matter what the answer is sometimes. Ah, okay. 
So the longer your body's running on vigilance, paying attention and trying to find that solution, then it just slows down your serotonin release. 90% of it we make in the gut, so the worse the diet is, the worse our serotonin levels, the harder it is to get motivated and activated. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Their parents are just accept them how they are. Yeah. Says you, as you see your parents. Okay, so frontal cortex is um, of the anterior commissures and as up and running as it could be, hold out, especially when you're feeling sad, bummed out, that sort of thing. And then it's easy for the body to whip into the old survival thing. Or it's a survival, you know, maybe it's a chicken and egg, maybe you whip into survival and then that shuts down that, then your motivation goes AWOL. But it's fear, threat, danger that shuts down that frontal cortex which is where you problem solve, it's where you do maths, it's where you do high level things. And fortunately, when you're thinking about stuff all the time, if that area isn't up and running, you're not actually getting anything out of your thought process. You're just burning up. It, it's just burning nutrients. Yeah. So that little area before the anterior cingulate gyrus, it's a six second loop underneath the logical and creative hemispheres of the brain. So when you're using that energy, which is the one that showed up before, you know, love them, hate them, you know, like them, you know, blah, 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 that little area, when we're thinking about stuff over and over again, our brain's waiting for logical and creative input. So the best thing you can do is, um, you know, sit down and sort of try to get yourself focused and grounded and, you know, so, or even do writing. Writing's really powerful because by using the action of writing, you're waking up that frontal cortex. Terrible spelling. Terrible head. Doesn't matter with the spelling. Matter. It doesn't writing. matter. Hate but the act of writing opens up your frontal cortex. Yeah, try to Actually, rethinking a thought over is just malware, isn't it? Yeah, it can it's be. It's a malware, it's yeah. a virus that just gets going around around your brain. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, my dear. Well done. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. It worked. That's interesting. Mm. Cool.